The Kaushitaki Upanishad, Sanskrit, Kausataki Upanishad, Kausataki Upanishad is an ancient Sanskrit text contained inside the Rigveda. It is associated with the Kaushitaki Shaka, but a Samanya Upanishad, meaning that it is common to all schools of Vedanta. It was included in Robert Hume's list of 13 principal Upanishads, and lists as number 25 in the Muktika canon of 108 Upanishads. The Kaushitaki Upanishad, also known as Kaushitaki Brahmana Upanishad, is part of the Kaushitaki Aranyaka or the Shankhyana Aranyaka. The Kausataki Aranyaka comprises 15 chapters and four of these chapters form the Kaushitaki Upanishad. Topic. Chronology The chronology of Kaushitaki Upanishad, like other Upanishads, is unclear. It is based on an analysis of archaism, style and repetitions across texts, driven by assumptions about likely evolution of ideas, and on presumptions about which philosophy might have influenced which other Indian philosophies. Kaushitaki Upanishad was probably composed before the middle of the first millennium BCE. Renata places Kaushitaki chronological composition in the third group of ancient Upanishads, composed about the time of Aitareya and Taittiriya Upanishads. Juan Mascaro posits that Kaushitaki Upanishad was probably composed after Brihadaranyaka, Chandogya and Taittiriya Upanishads, but before all other ancient principal Upanishads of Hinduism. Dusan as well as Winternitz consider the Kaushitaki Upanishad as amongst the most ancient prose-style Upanishads, and pre-Buddhist, pre-Jaina literature, Ian Witcher dates Kaushitaki Upanishad to about 800 BCE. According to a 1998 review by Patrick Olivelle, and other scholars, the Kaushitaki Upanishad was likely composed in a pre-Buddhist period, but after the more ancient Brihadaranyaka and Chandogya Upanishads, placing the Kaushitaki text between 6th to 5th century BCE. Topic. Structure The Kaushitaki Upanishad is part of the Rig Veda, but it occupies different chapter numbers in the Veda manuscripts discovered in different parts of India. Three sequences are most common, the Upanishad is chapters 1, 2, 3 and 4 of Kausataki Aranyaka, or 6, 7, 8, 9 chapters of that Aranyaka, or chapters 1, 7, 8 and 9 in some manuscripts. Paul Dusan suggests that these different chapter numbers may reflect that Upanishadic layer of Vedic literature were created and incorporated as spiritual knowledge in the pre-existing Aranyaka layer of Vedic texts, and when this was being done in distant parts of India, the sequencing information was not implemented uniformly. The Kausataki Upanishad is a prose text, divided into four chapters, containing 6, 15, 9 and 20 verses respectively. There is some evidence that the Kaushitaki Upanishad, in some manuscripts, had nine chapters, but these manuscripts are either lost or yet to be found. Topic. Content Topic. First chapter In the first chapter of the Kausataki Upanishad, rebirth and transmigration of Atman soul is asserted as existent, and that one's life is affected by karma, and then it asks whether there is liberation and freedom from the cycles of birth and rebirth. Verse 2 of the first chapter states it as follows Abridged Born am I and again reborn As twelvefold year, as thirteenth beyond the moon From the twelvefold, from the thirteenfold father The this one and the other verses this to know until ye, seasons, me led to death by virtue of this truth, by virtue of this tapas. I am the seasons, I am the child of the seasons. Who are you? I am you. In verse 6 of chapter 1, the Kausataki Upanishad asserts that a man is the season nature, sprouts from season, rises from a cradle, reborn through his wife, as splendor. It then states, in a dialogue between man and Brahman universal soul, eternal reality, he declares, Man is the self as every living being. You are the self of every being. What you are, I am. Man asks, Who am I then? Brahman answers, The truth. Edward Cowell translates the above verses that declare the oneness in Atman and Brahman. Principle as follows The soul answers, when asked by Brahma, Who art thou? I am time, I am what is in time. I am born from the womb of space, from the self-manifesting light of Brahman, the seed of the year, 
the splendor of the past and the cause, the soul of all that is sensible and insensible, and of the five elements. Thou art soul. What thou art, that am I. Brahma says to him, Who am I? His answer, Thou art the truth. Topic. Second chapter In the second chapter of the Kausataki Upanishad, each life and all lives is declared as Brahman, universal soul, eternal being. To the extent a person realizes that his being is identical with Brahman, to that extent he is Brahman. He doesn't need to pray, states Kausataki Upanishad, the one who realizes and understands his true nature is identical with the universe, the Brahman. To those who don't understand their Atman, they blindly serve their senses and cravings, they worship the without, and in contrast, those who do understand their Atman, their senses serve their Atman, they live holistically. In verse 5 of the second chapter, the Kausataki Upanishad asserts that external rituals such as Agnihotram offered in the morning and in the evening, must be replaced with inner Agnihotram, the ritual of introspection. Paul Dusan states that this chapter reformulates religion, by declaring, religion is supposed not to consist in the observance of the external cult, but that which places the whole life, with every breathe, in its service. It is knowledge that makes one the most beautiful, the most glorious, and the strongest. Not rituals, but knowledge should be one's pursuit. Topic. Third chapter After asserting Atman self, soul, as personified God in first two chapters, the Kausataki Upanishad develops the philosophical doctrine of the Atman in the third chapter. It identifies perception of sense objects as dependent on sense organs, which in turn depend on integrative psychological powers of the mind. Then it posits that freedom and liberation comes not from sense objects, not from sense organs, not from subjective psychological powers of mind, but that it comes from knowledge and action alone. The one who knows self, and acts harmoniously with the self, solemnly exists as the highest god which is that self Atman itself. The chapter invokes deity Indra, personifies him as Atman and reveals him as communicating that he is life breath and Atman, and Atman is him and all is one. The chapter presents the metaphysical definition of a human being as consciousness, Atman, soul. In verse 3, it develops the foundation for this definition by explaining that speech cannot define a human being, because we see human beings midst us who are born without the power of speech dumb, that sight cannot define a human being, because we see human beings midst us who are born without the ability of sight blind, that hearing cannot define a human being, because we see human beings midst us who are born without the ability to hear deaf, that mind cannot define a human being, because we see human beings midst us who are without the power of clear thinking foolishness, that arm or legs cannot define a human being, because we see human beings midst us who lose their arms or legs cut in an accident. A being has life force, which is consciousness. And that which is conscious, has life force. In many verses of chapter 3, the theme, the proof and the premise is reasserted by Kashataki Upanishad, that prana is prajna, prajna is prana, vi prana sa prajna ya va prajna sa prana life force is consciousness, consciousness is life force. In the last verses of chapter 3, the Kashataki Upanishad asserts that to really know someone, one must know his soul. Know the soul of the subject, not just superficial objects. The structure of its argument is as follows, abridged, one should not desire to understand the speech but should desire to know him who speaks, one should not desire to understand the smell described by a person but should desire to know him who smells. One should not desire to understand the form of the person but should desire to know him who sees the form. One should not desire to understand the sound described but should desire to know him who hears. One should not desire to understand the food description but should desire to know him who tastes. One should not desire to understand the deed but should desire to know him who performs the deed. One should not desire to understand pleasure and pain from excitation but should desire to know him who feels the pleasure and pain. One should not desire to understand the opinion and thinking but should desire to know him who opines and thinks. Because if there were no elements of consciousness, there would be no elements of material being. Because if there were no elements of material being, there would be no elements of consciousness. Because any one phenomenon does not come about through the one without the other. Because prana life force is also the prinatman knowledge self, is bliss, is not aging, is immortal. 
This is my Atman soul, which one should know, oh, this is my Atman which one should know. Edward Cowell translates these last verses as, Prana is prajna, it is joy, it is eternally young, it is immortal. This is the guardian of the world, this is the king of the world, this is the lord of the world, this is my soul. Thus let a man know, thus let a man know." Robert Hume summarizes the last verse of Kashataki's chapter 3 as stating that, "...a human being's ethical responsibility, his very self-being is identical with the world all." <laughs> Fourth chapter The fourth chapter of Kausataki Upanishad builds on the third chapter, but it peculiarly varies in various manuscripts of Rig Veda discovered in Indian subcontinent. This suggests that this chapter may be an addition of a later era. Despite the variations, the central idea is similar in all recensions so far. The chapter offers 16 themes in explaining what Brahman Atman is, which overlaps with the 12 found in chapter 2 of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. This last chapter of Kausataki Upanishad states that Brahman and Self are one, there is ultimate unity in the Self, which is the creative, pervasive, supreme and universal in each living being. Translations The Kashataki Upanishad has been translated by many scholars, but the translations vary because the manuscripts used vary. It was translated into Persian in medieval times, as Kokink, however, the manuscript used for that translation has been lost. The most cited English translations are those by Eduard Cowell, Paul Dusan, Robert Hume and Max Muller. References External links Kashataki Upanishad Robert Hume translator Oxford University Press 1921 Kashataki Upanishad Max Muller translator Oxford University Press Kashataki Upanishad Edward Cowell translator Sanskrit version is in pages 1 to 144 Cowell's English translation begins page 145 onwards Sri Aurobindo The Upanishads Upanishads Sri Aurobindo Ashram, Pondicherry, 1972. Kashataki Upanishad Public Domain Audiobook at LibriVox.